Rachel Riley has revealed she was the victim of upskirting. The countdown presenter didn't name the man, but said he's a celebrity. Crazy. She was at a friend's house with her husband, Pasha, when it happened, and this is how she described the situation. I think he just got um, an Apple Watch, and at a party at a friend's house, I was playing table tennis with Pash, and this guy, in full view of everyone, came and put his phone on the floor under my skirt while I was playing table tennis, and went and sat back down, like, the same distance I am from you now, you know, a couple of metres away, while him and all his mates looked at his watch. It was like a video, basically, so he went and put his phone down so he could look up my skirt, and went two metres away where we could see what he was doing to go and look at his phone, look up my skirt. Again, I was too polite. Like, now, having, like, you know, the, the, being able to digest it and think about it, if someone tried to do that to me again, I would break their phone. Oof, terrible. So why do women feel the need to be polite in these situations, even though upskirting is actually now a crime? It's terrible. What do you think, Vanessa? Well, uh, I, I, think, I think part of it's the shock. I think when something like that happens, mm. you, you can't quite believe it's really happening. Mm. You're so astounded. You go into a kind of a paralysis. Then there's a the feeling of not wanting to sort of draw attention to yourself, be disruptive. You know, she's at someone's party. She doesn't want to ruin the party. She doesn't want to kind of make everyone else feel uncomfortable. Um, I mean, I know that it happened to me, not upskirting, but being basically groped mm. live on TV on The Big Breakfast when I used to be on the bed, bed on The Big Breakfast. And I was wearing a long beaded gown and Rolf Harris was on the bed next to me. Me. I was interviewing him and I could hear the beads on my dress crunching as he moved the dress higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. His wife was there, probably about two feet away, and I was live on telly and it's a very jolly feel-good <sighs> programme. So I wasn't going to say, you know, get your hand off my thigh or whatever, and I could feel the hand going further and further and further, and just as it was about to get to the key spot, I oh did what God. none of us would ever dream of doing on this programme, which is I threw to a break, which you're not allowed to do without the director telling you it's time for a break, but I didn't know what else to do. Anyway, I threw to the break, I said, oh, um, I think we'll go for a break now, you oh know, we'll gosh. be back off the break. And then I said nothing at all, I just got off the bed, and I sort of walked round to the other <clears> side, and I never said a word. He didn't say anything, I didn't say anything. And then when, after the break, the interview continued. Oh, my god! And then I went home without saying a word to anyone. I told my then-husband, I think I might have told my sister, a friend. But I didn't want to break up his marriage. I didn't want to cause trouble. I didn't want... You know, they're all, I mean, what but do you looking think looking back is, in is, is hindsight, do you wish that you would have said a little something to him, even just whispered course, to him, like, how dare you? But what do you think about why women stay quiet? Oh, I mean, I don't stay quiet, clearly. <laughs> but <laughs> for some time you, you did. Because I was in a very abusive situation for 10 years, yeah. and it's only... When I got out, was I able to speak about it? Yes. So my situation was, was slightly different because it was all behind closed doors. Yeah. And then when I finally came out about it, I just, yeah, morally, I just kind of said and told everything. Let's with get an a army of women this. Have you me. ever had anything similar yeah, happen? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Vanessa, that story is just Terrible. harrowing. And yeah. do you know what? When women are told we're being too polite, it isn't politeness, we're being forced into silence. And you, you demonstrated that, I think, with, with your, your story so perfectly, which is that we are often brought up, I think, not maybe not directly, but we learn secondhand that we're supposed to just smile and make the man feel comfortable mm -hmm. and not cause a scene, because we know that if we cause a scene, we're the one who's being difficult. Um, and I really hope that, that you know, my generation and, and younger are learning that it's actually OK to make a scene. And, and to call this kind of behaviour out. And, and as for what happened to Rachel, what on earth was not just this guy doing... But the other guys but with his him. friends, they, know. They're, they're also culpable of this. Because they had an opportunity. I, I strongly believe that if we're going to fight misogyny, sexual harassment of women in this country, violence against women and girls, it is on men to make a difference, allied men, good men, to step in and say, this is not OK. Now, somebody should have said at that party... Well, yeah. you would have, you would have clearly boy. thought that... I, mean, I, I find it unbelievable this would have happened. I, mean, I can understand what you were saying, Vanessa, that, you know, there was a time back then when it felt all wrong, plus there's the element, you know, the huge element of shock in all of that. And I, I'm, I'm sure Rachel has her own reasons as to why she didn't name this person. There's a mm. big part of me that thinks, why don't you just scream the guy's name mm. out on that podcast and let everybody know exactly who it was? That's it. For me... <clears throat> I, mean, I can not imagine what it's like to have that happen to you. Mm. And men should definitely play an active role uh, in stopping that kind of behaviour. But, as Ian said, I, I would feel odd. If Rachel Riley herself won't name the person, what can I then do 
to, 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 to help the situation. I think she should name the person. Mm -hmm. Because what if that guy now goes on and has upskirted other women since? And he'll continue doing it until someone speaks up and says, this is the guy doing it, he has to stop. But it's not, I don't think it's ever a woman's responsibility or the victim's responsibility to stop the man from doing something. It's actually the other men. Maybe from her speaking out, other men might listen to that podcast. Certainly we're talking about it now, mm -hmm. it's in the news. And his male friends will go, do you know what? Now is the time I'm going to have a word with him and tell him that that is unacceptable and I'll report him. Do you know, it's not, it's not just uh, her who could have reported him to the police. Mm -hmm. Any one of those people it's who saw It's interesting, isn't it, that she didn't tell her husband. Maybe yeah. she thought, if I tell my husband, my husband will get, you know, go for this guy, then they'll end up, we'll have to call the police, I'm going to be arrested. You know, you always think, do I want to escalate some kind of hellish situation yeah. that ends up with a kind of public exposure? And yeah. you know, that's why women stay quiet. Because exactly. you don't want to rock the boat, you don't want to upset people. Yeah. You've been brought up not to do it very often. Thank you both. And also you're scared. Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> Petrified, because yeah. you know what happens. Yeah. Right, thank you both for sharing your stories.